I told my parents about being on the show, and they said, oh no, oh no, but I tried to explain to them that Flavor Flav is no longer an addict. He's may or may not be taking care of his children, I don't know. Dream big, Susan. <laughs> Dream big. Hey friends, two questions. A, do I look amazingly cool? And B, do you remember the Flavor of Love starring Flavor Flav and all those other people? Squeezing my butt cheeks together. Flavor Flav. Obviously it's just a competition. Thank you. She don't know nothing about Flav, she get it. Let me backtrack a little bit. First of all, if you're new here, hi, my name is Jamie French. I'm your host of this show, remember that? So today we're gonna be taking a very ratchet journey to the highest rated show in VH1's history as of March, 2006. No, I did not make that up, it's on the Wikipedia. To the flavor of love. <laughs> your hand if you remember that show. The Flavor of Love was just spectacular. First of all, it gave us Tiffany Pollard, aka New York, from I Love New York and all those other spinoffs that they put her on. And it also gave us Pumpkin, America's favorite loogie hawker. So this show first aired in 2006. I was like 16 or 17 at the time and I would rush home from school to watch this show just to kind of get my daily dose of like secondhand ratchetness embarrassment. And I mean, can you blame me? This show was actually produced by the same guy who gave us Rock of Love with Bret Michaels, Strange Love, A Surreal Life, and my personal favorite, Who Wants to Marry My Dad? <laughs> So you know it's good. So the premise of Flavor of Love was similar to The Bachelor in that you had 15 or 20 women pining for the love of an eligible bachelor. But instead of like these beige Becky bachelors that we've seen a million times on ABC, this bachelor was Flavor Flav. <laughs> And instead of rose ceremonies, they would have clock ceremonies. Know what time it is? You know what time it is. <laughs> you know what time it because is. Because nothing says I love you like a giant 10 pound timepiece dangling from your decollete. Instead of Chris Hansen, we got Big Rick. And instead of telegrams, we got Flavagrams. I have a message for Mr. Flavor Flav. Which in my opinion, are way more bussin' than telegrams. Real quick, Flavor Flav, for those of you who don't know, he's a rapper. He co-founded the rap group Public Enemy in 1985 and he, Wikipedia Wikipedia describes him as a hype man. So like when other people were rapping, Flavor Flav would be in the background and be like, yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Oh. I'm known as the greatest hype man in the music business. He rules, honestly. And also, he set a house on fire as a small child while playing with a lighter. <laughs> kind of weird that somebody thought that was necessary to add to his Wikipedia page. <laughs> Anyway, Flav is a super fun guy. I totally fell in love with his personality when I watched this in high school. And he's actually a really accomplished musician. He's worth a Google if you have time, but we don't have time today to talk about accomplishments and awards. All we have time for is face spitting, noxious screaming, fighting, hair pulling, and also raw chicken. <laughs> Don't miss it. Ha. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Buzz Nutsons, and today's video is sponsored by Audible, the leading provider of spoken word entertainment. Are you literally obsessed with knives? Do you think about knives? When your buddy Nick's wife is jibber jabbering about a whole lot of nothing. So the other day when Janet was here, I walked into our kitchen, I forgot to tell you this, and she was eating ravioli out of a can and spitting it back out into the sink because she's on like some crazy diet where no she like tries outside, food. But, but, but it does like, make a great carry knife. That's about a three and seven five, uh, three point seven five inch blade. It's A2 tool steel. Well, I got excellent news. With Audible, you can listen to podcasts about knives anytime, anywhere, like out here the woods. Tune in to Knife Content Galore with podcasts like The Knife Junkie, Knife Talk, and Mark of the Maker. Audible also has tons of audiobooks, and as a member, you'll get one credit every month. Good for any title in the premium section. I myself recommend Knife Making by Michael Peterson. Hey, Audible offers other things too, like original entertainment, guided fitness and meditation, sleep tracks, you know, and all that jazz, but let's be real. All that matters is knives. Right now, for a limited time, save 60% on your first three months. That's like six bucks. 
It's five ninety five. It's only five ninety five a month. So give yourself the gift of listening to knife stuff, or whatever you're into, by going to audible.com slash Jamie. Hey, yeah, that's me. Sorry I didn't do the ad read this time. It's just my friend Buzz was in town and he, he needed a job. So. That's J-A-I-M-E. Spill it right. Thank you, Audible, for sponsoring today's video. And now, back to the show. The leading provider of spoken world entertainment. You said it's world! Spoken word! <laughs> God dang it! Hey guys, we're back. And before we watch this first episode, I f it's noteworthy to mention to you that Flav nicknamed all the girls in the house. Like he gave them his own nicknames instead of using their real names. And the reason why I picked nicknames is because I knew I wouldn't remember their real names. They had Hottie, New York, Pumpkin, Hoops, Goldie, Miss Latin, Sweetie. Why do I remember all of these names? So it's just important for you to know that going forward, okay? Here we go, season one, episode one. Oh, Big Ray! Come with me this way, please. <laughs> Oh, classic hottie. She's always dressed to the nines. I think there was an episode, if I remember correctly, where they like went to church. Yeah, Flav introduced the girls to his mom and they went to a church service and she like wore a little red riding hood cape. It's like, do you know where we're going? It's the house of the Lord, have some respect. I'm so metal. All right, so right off the bat, things are going swimmingly for Oyster. What are you gonna call me? Oyster. Oyster? Oh, no. Oyster. Oh, you can't call me Oyster. Can't imagine why she didn't want that name. <laughs> <laughs> Cutie, sweetie, hottie, pumpkin, Miss Latin, oyster. You like apples? I love apples. Wait, apples? No, I think apples might be better than oyster because oyster is singular and apples are plural. I would rather be plural. What would my name be, Flav? Melons? I got bubbles. I actually still don't even really know why. You gonna be peaches. Word up. You're a nice gent. <laughs> Slap it, boy. Oh, sweetie's got put over her crack. How's she gonna fart? Got the cherries. That's right. I have like really big nipples, like on my breath. Okay, I, I don't want to keep harping on the nicknames thing because we're like barely into the first episode, but I just want to talk to Cherry because personally, th this is just me, but that's probably not what I would lead with. Really big nipples? If I was like pining for a man's affection, it's a little much. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't got no butt. I see nothing but a broomstick. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you guys. You two are going to love Flavor Flav by the end of this episode. He is the most charming person in the world. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, y'all might get a splint in your finger. Flav, there's nothing wrong with a broomstick butt, okay? I thought I might not fit in with the other women. I wasn't sure how ghetto some people might be. Apples with a Z. We're not off to a good start here, okay? New York. She just comes off incredibly fake, so hopefully he catches on to that sooner or later. Excuse me, it's What's time up, for- Uh-oh, here comes Hottie. I'd like to borrow him for a minute if that's okay. He's oh, sure. He's now. just in demand. Getting awkward. They're like a loud pack of idiot <laughs> and I'm sick of them already. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, meet New York. The literal meanest person on the show, but somehow ended up being my favorite. What does that say about me? Minute. They all need to go on home now because Flav is already my man. This is my mansion and my money. Hottie is like literally- Hottie is literally like- Hottie is just- Hottie is just like- <laughs> Hey, she's crazy. I remember an episode specifically where Flav had the contestants make fried chicken for his mom and she literally put raw, raw chicken in the microwave. I'll have to show that episode later. But anyway, it kills me because I totally forgot season one, episode one, clock ceremony one. How do you get the first clock? First one that's going to get a clock. Yo, Hadi. I don't remember how many seasons she lasts, but I'm bothered by it, okay? Good morning, oh good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Not you. You can choke. Why choke though? Maybe I should take back what I said earlier about liking New York, because that was really harsh. All right, I'm already upset that we're already in episode two. We are five minutes into episode two and we're just now getting a fight between the girls. Not that like I like Hiding, okay, I don't like violence. I just, I just do apparently. So the girls are on their way to their date with Flav and things heat up in the van. <laughs> I don't Turn the around, around. Turn the around. 
You know what? I remember. Do you remember like if you were turned around fighting with somebody at school? It sucked so bad when they would tell you to turn around because you ha eventually you had to. You couldn't spend the rest of the class period facing behind you. Oh, it was the worst. It hurt your pride so bad. Rain knows what's up, man. <laughs> I want to know who the driver was. Like, what was he up to? I can just see him sitting up there like, man, I thought I was getting this really sweet gig working for VH1, but this is, this is stressful. My eardrums hurt. I'd rather go back to working for Lay's. <laughs> Okay, so the first date, they do this like hot tub date thing where each girl has 10 minutes with Flav and they're supposed to like impress him somehow. <laughs> In the hot tub, they're supposed to like decorate their hot tub and personalize it and impress him with some sort of skill or talent. And the talents are just, they're, they're good. They're good talents. <laughs> Yeah, well, I gotta fail to miss you holding me up. <laughs> See, look at I'd like you to look deeply into the light. Mm -hmm. Yes, to look up at the light right over there. It's warm like the sun, keeping you nice and warm. I don't I want you to be cold. She tried to hypnotize your man. I actually remember that specific line from high school just bursting into laughter on my mom's couch when he said that. <laughs> but seriously, why'd, why'd she try to hypnotize him? Kind of ironic because Pumpkin actually said she was a hypnotist or something. And a hypnotist assistant. The point of this is that Hottie is weird. She tried to hypnotize me. <laughs> Don't you think I'm crazy? He has the best comedic timing, I swear. The hot tub thing though, it was actually pretty mild compared to some of the other dates, like this, episode three. He takes the girls to a nursing home. We pull up to this building and we see so-and-so senior center. We're like what? And basically he said like, whichever one of you these elderly folk like best is the one who wins a date with me tonight. And the whole thing is just unwatchable. Left and yeah, Miss Hottie. Right and turn. <laughs> New York, I mean, she looks thrilled. She is like obviously very comfortable with this situation and definitely like the bring home to grandma type. <laughs> Would you help me get my teeth in? I had to soak them here. Okay, sure, I, I can, I can. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can. <laughs> Look, New York, I understand. Maybe you're not comfortable putting somebody's teeth in for them, okay? But you never let it show on your face. That's the cardinal rule of putting other people's teeth in. You just pretend. You just pretend it's a run of the mill task. Like you've seen it a million times before. And then you go to the bathroom and like vomit. Oh, Sweetie, for the win, that's my girl. See, it's not that gross. You know, provided that the teeth were brushed, which I'm assuming they were. This lady looks like a nice, respectable gal. Sweetie wins that round. Yo, New York, get back in there, girl. I'm, I'm, I'm going back. All right, baby All right. girl. <laughs> that was the best reaction she could have possibly had. All right, Flav, okay. <laughs> I'm going back. I'm going to put double the amount of teeth in. Line them up. <laughs> Show me all the guns. <laughs> the only 26 inch around anything on Hottie is her neck. Okay. You know what, Oyster? I don't like Hottie, but we're not going to shame Hottie's body. Okay? Unless you want to be shamed for that eyeshadow. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, y'all. It's time for the chicken episode. Season one, episode four. My favorite thing I've ever seen on network television. <laughs> I know that my chicken is going to be the best because I was like raised like vegetarian with a lot of fresh vegetables. So I incorporated vegetables into my recipe. That is so much worse than I remember. I went to the microwave, put the chicken in and there was a button that said chicken. You know, my favorite part about this chicken is the carrot, that carrot sticking out just really says like, hey, I may look like a semi-digested alien brain, but at least I'm healthy. Ah, this is crazy. I take back what I said about New York being my favorite. My favorite is 100% Goldie. Goldie's sense of humor is like on my level. <laughs> Not that I would ever say that Hottie was crazy. I just think Goldie's like a fun person. You know, it kind of reminded me of like a um, a ghetto prom and everybody had the same day. Did everyone enjoy the chicken? But I can't even eat. I thought 
thought the chicken was lovely. I was so anticipating seeing my dish. I knew that Flav would appreciate the effort I put into the dish and the vegetable recipe. And he would really appreciate the salmonella and the plethora of harmful bacteria lurking within the confines of the raw chicken breast. You know, I feel like we've we've been hating on Hottie a lot, but really who I want to hate on in today's episode is Pumpkin. I can't even breathe. <gasps> She gets really far in the season and then Flav finds out that she is basically just on the show trying to be famous and that she's done like 10 prior reality shows. I'm not like trying to get on TV. I've just been on like four game shows and blind date and then a talk show and then this. Yeah, I'm not like trying to be famous. All I've done was like a couple episodes of Rumor and maybe like one or two of Next and the real world seasons one through 17. And I like did an appearance on Bad Girls Club. Quarters for a minute, one episode. And then who wants to date my dad? But that's it. And Pumpkin is the one who straight up spit in New York's face when she got eliminated. <laughs> Like that. That made me wanna. Uh. I agree with Flav 100%. That's so not cool. Do anything else. Your slimy spit onto another person. I know you've been eating lean pockets the whole time you've been on this show. Her breath smelled like straight up sh. Pumpkin and New York's anger towards each other was out of this world. Their rivalry was like one of the worst I've ever seen on reality TV. I think it started because New York was always telling Pumpkin she like needed a facelift. And you need that facelift. I might have a few wrinkles, but at least I look like a woman. Not nice. I've been hating on Hottie. I've been hating on Pumpkin. So I did some Googling. I was like, what are like some of the worst moments of this show? Because I mean, raw chicken, that can't be the worst thing, right? Well, um, that is correct. It is not the worst thing. Cause I typed into Google flavor of love and I typed a letter P because I was trying to find something on pumpkin but instead the thing that popped up in the Google search was flavor of love poop on floor episode. Then I seen this girl in the back she kind of went out of frame for a minute but then she came back. When she came back she had this look on her face like so I take this deep breath and what is that smell? Someone, uh, oh, that's yeah, that's watch out. What is that? I, I was like, wait a minute, I know we don't have no dogs in here, but there's on my stairs. Something's pooped Something. on the floor. Something is on her stairs. <laughs> <laughs> I would have begged. I would have begged the producers if I was something like, please don't include the clip where I pooped on the floor. I know it's good TV and all, but I feel bad for her, honestly. You know what? It could have been an accident, but maybe it was on purpose. Maybe she just didn't like the nickname she was given. Something is on herself. Maybe she was standing there thinking, you know what? This dude named me something. There's a million things he could have named me. Could have named me bunny, fluffy, flower, beautiful, gorgeous. But he chose something. That's what I think about that. It's the worst thing I've ever heard of. <laughs> on the floor <laughs> on national television. So uh, that's it guys. That is the flavor of love for the most part. Let me know if you want to do a part two. I'm really tempted to do a part two and go through season two. Not just because of like the something incident. <laughs> just because I kind of remember season two being like a little more exciting. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. And if, as always, thank you for being here. Thank you for membering this show with me. And as usual, let me know down below what else we should member. I'm gonna go eat some raw chicken. <laughs> love you guys. Bye. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, but I tried to explain to them that they said, oh no, oh no, taking care of his kids, I don't know, that was close, taking care of his children, I don't know. <laughs> Cutie, sweetie, pumpkin, gummy, <laughs> no one was gummy. <laughs> She's gonna challenge me to some checkers. Yeah. Sir, that is the last thing you want is to play checkers with Hottie. Really to play any game with Hottie because she will get you. I just want to know what these people were thinking when all these women walked in and they're just trying to like do crafts and play cards and minding their own business and in walks bubbles with a Z, you know? <laughs> this poor lady's like, I wasted three ounces of polygrip for this. The rest of episode two is basically just another weird date. This time he wanted to see how they would interact with kids and nothing cool really happened besides gold to getting puked on. <laughs> I know a lot of reality TV is staged, but <laughs> did they stage that? Oh God, they're gonna feed it to his mom. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
It ain't cooked. I forgot that they actually like served their chicken dishes. I Googled like flavor of love hottie chicken just to see if I could find like any extra funny stuff about it. And there is a multiple articles, not one, but multiple articles confirming that hottie from the flavor of love has her own cooking show all about making chicken. Tagline says, she looks like Beyonce, but you can call her the poultry princess. Yes, she has definitely proven herself as the poultry princess, as made evident here by this beautiful, exquisite dish. I mean, you can't even call, this isn't even chicken at this point, this is art. You know, when I refer to this show as Ratchet, I'm really referring to Pumpkin. <laughs> Not like, in a mean way. I'm not saying she's actually ratchet in person. I know a lot of this stuff is staged and I'm just saying her her character, I guess, on this show, <laughs> pretty ratchet. Don't be wearing your pretty little shelves about where Jamie's at either. <clears throat> I, I needed a couple extra bucks. S spent my whole check on a knife. Anyway, she's kind enough to, to, to let me do this one. And the funniest thing is that she's not even losing weight. <laughs> 